Week one of the 2019 NHI AA Division II South Football Conference is in the books, and the Milford Spartans join Alvern, Sauhegan, Conval, and Manchester West as opening night winners. And the shocker of this early season in Division II happened in the North Conference, where Bow High School snapped Plymouth High School's 27-game win streak. Hello, Spartan fans, and welcome to the Coach's Corner Show. I'm Kevin St. Ange, your host, and this smiling man next to me is 19-year head coach of the Spartans, Keith Jones. Congratulations, Coach. 35-21 win over rival Hollis Brookline to open the season and avenge that seven-point loss of a year ago. You have to be feeling pretty good about your team's performance Friday night. Anytime you can improve um, from the year before, it's always good. And anytime you can start off with a win, it's good. Spartans lost the uh, coin toss to open the game. Hollis Brookline elects to receive, so the season opening kickoff gives your team a great opportunity to uh, lay a hit on the opposition, get the early game jitters out, early season jitters out of the way. But Hollis Brookline's Austin Johnson takes that kickoff 70 yards deep into Spartan territory. Not a good look to open the season, Coach. No, not certainly the way we wanted to start that off. Um, but you know what? It, it gave us a uh, quick taste of having to face adversity. <laughs> and, um, you know, you always want to get better as the season goes on with those types of things. So. And then you catch a break, though. A rare kick return team face mask penalty brings the ball back all the way back to the uh, spot of the foul, a more manageable field position in Cavalier territory. That set the tone for the rest of the night. So Hollis Brookline had a rough night with penalties. Well, they, they must have had over 150, 160 yards of penalties. I'd never seen that before. Two face mask calls on the offense, I think, in that game. So we were blessed with um, some field position due to those types of things. Contrast that with your team, Coach. The Spartans had two penalties, one for an offsides, one for illegal procedure. Showed some pretty good discipline early in the season. Yeah, for being game one, um, I was impressed with our guys. Uh, we got away with one. There's one the officials missed late in the game. We should have had three. But um, I, I was impressed that we didn't have a lot of holding penalties and we only had a couple miscues. So as good as it felt when that penalty was announced, it didn't last long as Sander Wimmer, Hollis Brookline's standout quarterback, marched his Cavaliers to your eight-yard line. The Cavs were threatening when Gavin Erda makes an interception in the end zone and returns it to the Milford 11. That celebration, however, was also short-lived because Junior, Junior Ugu fumbles the Spartans' first offensive play of the season, and the Cavs take over on your 18-yard line. Not only were they not able to put it in, in the end zone, they turn it over on downs, and don't even attempt a field goal inside your red zone. Yeah, I, I got a quick comment on that because Sharita will kill us if we let that go. It wasn't Emmanuel who fumbled the ball. It was um, Caden Zielinski who dropped that one. So, um, you know, those things happen in the option game. Sometimes you drop the ball. It was, we were lucky that we dodged two bullets in a row and then had the opportunity to get the ball back and make something happen. That's why we have film, Coach, so that we can go back and take a look at it ourselves. Um, you take over on the 10-yard line, um, and after a couple of interior runs by Junior Ugo, um, that moves the chains a couple of times on the fourth play of the drive, Gavin Erda breaks off a 67-yard run and the first score of the 2019 season. So much for grinded out, clock-consuming football. You know, we would love to have 23, 24 play drives, but, you know, if Gavin would like to run touchdowns every four play, we're not going to argue with him. Let's talk about your offensive line, Coach. Nobody goes for 257 yards as your quarterback did on that night without tremendous offensive line play. It starts with senior tri-captain center Kyle Forsley. Kyle did an amazing job. I mean, the biggest thing in football is the center quarterback exchange. Uh, we've been blessed with a good one there. Um, he controls the line of scrimmage. He's a vocal guy. He's an NHS kid, 4.0 student. Um, just a tremendous on all aspects of the game. Who else on that offensive line stood out for you on the game, Phil Coach? Um, I, I thought that Samson Hodges uh, did a good job. They had a couple tough interior guys. Uh, Joe Shepard did a great job controlling the edge. Um, and, um, you know, our newcomers, um, Ben Kilgore and, you know, a backup guy that had to go in when Burroughs went down, Jordan Post, they held their own. They did a, they did a decent job. The second scoring drive was also only four plays after Hollis Brookline gave you a short field to work with. It ended with a junior Ugu three-yard plunge, and you close out the first half with two more scoring drives of 46 and 57 yards, 28 to nothing at the half. What was your message to the team during intermission? Same thing would always be in that point. Pedal to the metal. You know, we still got a lot of football to play. Let's go out there, put the nail in the coffin, and, and you know, make this a JV football game. Um, sadly, 
that message might have got misinterpreted because we didn't do that and we let them back in the game and then we had to scrape a little bit and and um, you know play a lot longer than I think we should have. So let's talk about that second half. Uh, quarterback Sander Wimmer for the Cavaliers and wide receiver Blake Burgesson had a big second half. They connected on a pair of touchdown passes of 48 and 62 yards. Burgesson had a big night, six catches, 176 yards. Austin Johnson, who took that first opening kickoff 70 yards, he had nine grabs for 83 yards. Wasn't enough to overcome over 140 yards of penalties, was it? No, I mean, you know, we knew they were going to get their catches. We know they were going to move the ball. You know, Xander is, is a great quarterback. He's got great precision and great arm. They, you know, this is what they do. They want to throw the ball 95% of the time, and that's what they work on every day. Just like we work on running the ball, they work on passing the ball. So we were prepared for them to chew up yardage. Um, the game plan was just we got to keep them out of the end zone. And for the most part, we did except for a few plays in the second half there. So despite big numbers from the Cavalier offense, your 5-3 defense and three deep zone pass coverage seem to be in bend but don't break mode. Correct. Again, your interior line play, like on the offense, on the defense, it was exceptional. It had a really, um, uh, uh, it was really effective at getting penetration and it forced uh, Wimmer to really move his feet in the pocket. Was that design by design? Well, the, the game plan from the get-go is to, to keep him from breaking containment because when he gets to the edge, that's when he's the most dangerous. Uh, we want him to have to run up the alleys in the middle of the field. Um, sometimes we did a good job of stopping him, and sometimes we didn't. I still think he had almost 100 yards rushing. Um, he, had a, he had a pretty good night. So he's very elusive. He's big. He's strong. He knocks people off. Um, our kids work their tails off all night chasing him exhausting themselves um, but you know I, ultimately I think we, we did enough. The penalties hurt Hollis Brookline but two interceptions also hurt the effort. Uh, Wimmer wound up with 310 yards passing and as you mentioned coach a buck 21 on the ground. Most of that probably um, out of the scramble. Yes yeah, so, you know they had a couple design runs um, but most of the time you know he was picking up 10-15 on, on big time scrambles especially on third down. Coach, while this is a senior-laden team with 22 of them up and down your roster, I'm, I'm sure you were pleased by the performance of your sophomore place kicker, Colin Craig. Four PATs and with plenty of leg to spare. That has to be a confidence boost for the young kicker. Oh, absolutely. It was first time ever playing in a varsity football game was that night, and he showed no fear, and he just got it done. We mentioned the uh, couple of fumbles that uh, occurred in the game on your side of the ball. Are those mechanical issues with ball security, or are these just – good hits by the Cavalier defense? Uh, they had a couple couple ones when they hit us on a blitz and, and hit the mesh. Um, the one with Caden, I mean, the kid just came in like a freight train and put his helmet right on the ball. I mean, that's a tough one. Um, but there's some things there we can clean up. Late in the fourth quarter, Coach, you had your team in the red zone after a nice sustained drive. Uh, you were up two scores. You were moving the ball well, but you opted to kneel down three times and allow time to expire. Just wondering your thought process on that. You know, they had a couple timeouts left, and they could have prolonged it. Um, I took a knee on the first down to see what they would do. If they were going to take a timeout, we were going to keep going. Gotcha. And, you know, Chris, Chris, I think, said, you know what, enough is enough, um, and um, didn't take the timeout. So we, were, we knew we, with the new 40-second rule, we knew that we could run the whole thing out. Mutual respect by two head coaches yeah, that I played think so. against each other. Yeah, absolutely. Injury report, Coach. There seemed to be a lot of linemen cramping up, particularly in the second half. Any major injuries coming out of this game? Um, a lot of cramps. Um, you know, we we lost Colton Burrows early in the game, still being evaluated, um, and hopefully the calf cramps will will go away next week.